Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Kennedy, and welcome to my first lecture in this five-part series on what is science. I know, science, we, we hear that word a lot, or do you even science, bro? So what I want to do is talk about the nature and limitations of science and how we science and the role of science in our everyday life. Like, it's actually really important. And you know what? When we don't listen to science and scientists, oh, we kind of run into problems. But why should we listen to science? Why is science so important in our everyday life? And what I want to do is begin with an introduction as to what is science. I mean, this is really important stuff. So, let me come over here. One of my earliest influences in science was an astronomer. I always wanted to be an astronomer, and his name was Carl Sagan. And Carl Sagan really changed my life. He, he, he helped me realize what science was. It's not a collection of facts. It's not memorizing elements on the periodic chart. You know, I, I was weird. I like to do that. But hey, that's definitely not for everybody, right? But Carl Sagan, he said, you know, Science is more than a body of knowledge. Science is a way of thinking. and This is central to its success. And science invites us to let the facts in. And even when those facts don't conform to our preconceptions. And that's important. Because sometimes the findings of science, man, they really challenge the way we think about the world, right? And that can be hard to have the foundations of what you think is right challenged by the facts of science. But science, that's it. It's a, it's a way of thinking about the world, right? Now, what I want to do in this first episode is really go over the nature and limitations of science. What is science? What is not science? And I love this picture of this flat earth on some elephants riding on the back of a giant sea turtle floating through the cosmos. And you better get Spock up here, right? I can't wait to see his face. And you know, Spock was a Vulcan from Star Trek. And the Vulcans were pure logic. They had no emotions. All of their thoughts and opinions were based on evidence and logic. So, hey, let me ask you this question. What is science? Is it a collection of facts to be memorized? Hmm, maybe not, I just kind of said that. Is it a process? that allows us to learn about the natural world. And hold on to that word, natural world. Or is this just a class I have to take to check off a box so I can have my career and get through this college education? I hope you don't think like that. Now, if you're sitting here choosing, hey, it's a process. It's a process that we use to learn about the natural world and you're on the right track. That is science. It's a process. It's a way of thinking. That's important, right? Now, here's a question. Is science limited? Think about that. Are there limitations to science? And are you thinking to yourself, no, it's, it's open to any explanation. Or is it limited to explanations and observations that meet certain criteria? Or maybe it depends on the situation. Think about that. Well, the answer is, you know, science is actually limited. I know, I've probably just shattered the foundations of most people right now, right? Because you realize that science is unlimited. So what in the world limits science? Well, it's not unlimited, but science is limited to the natural world. Things that we can observe, things that we can measure, things that we can test for, at least potentially. And let's get into more of this here. So importantly, Science offers a pathway to understanding the natural world. Now, without science, you know, we wouldn't really understand the natural world. I mean, every time we heard lightning bolts, we would think Zeus is sitting up on his mountain on Olympus Mons throwing thunderbolts at us. That's not the case, right? And without science, hmm, when you don't listen to science, certain pandemics can get a lot worse because we're trying to do something about it without any knowledge of it or we don't follow the recommendations. So without using science, without understanding how the world works, including the spread of viruses, hey, things can get bad really quickly. And we are living in a world where, uh, yeah, we didn't use a lot of science on that. We, were, we had bad direction. We had the worst outcome in the world because of 
not using science. Now, let's take a step back and you know think about this. Science is really at its heart. It's a desire to know, to know about the world around us. That's actually the root of the word. Now, fortunately, we've got this method that we're going to use, and that's going to be the subject of my next talk. But science is a process. Science, you know, the very first step of science is making observations. You got to you got to you got to watch the world around you. You got to look around, right? And then science relies on curiosity. Well, you got to ask questions about your observations. Science is more than just making observations and asking questions. Now, of course, we have to start there. But what makes something science is that we test our ideas, we test our hypotheses by making additional observations, by testing them with experiments. That's important. And then we, we evaluate the information that we get. We evaluate our data, the evidence, and we draw our conclusions based on that. So scientific knowledge, that's based on evidence. The data collected from observations and experiments and how we interpret that using statistics and other methods. Now, remember, science, you know, it's its more than a collection of facts to be memorized. It's this process. And, you know, ch science can really challenge common sense knowledge. And in fact, uh, the importance of experimentation cannot be overstated. Think about this. The Greek philosopher Aristotle, I mean, he was very curious about the world. He was a smart guy. He unfortunately kind of led Western thought down a bad path for a few hundred, for a few centuries. But one of his ideas was that a heavier object falls to the earth faster than a light object. That makes sense, right? I mean, heavier objects are going to fall faster. He didn't test it. And in fact, it wasn't tested for thousands of years because it was just based on common sense knowledge. And this, like I said, stuck around as collective wisdom for 1900 years until Galileo came along and challenged that belief with a simple experiment. Now, according to legend, it's just unclear if he actually did this or not, Galileo climbed up a large tower like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, not pizza, and he dropped two objects, two rocks of different weight, and guess what? They hit the floor, they hit the ground, at the same time, and everybody was so surprised, they're like, whoa, but this experiment was done, and it overturned like 1,900 years of common sense knowledge in an instant by doing one experiment. Wow, how ground shaking was that, right? Uh, yeah, now of course, if you do a feather, it's gonna fall slower because it's meeting air resistance, but drop them in a vacuum and you'll get the same result. Now, here's the thing about science. Science is based on making observations and asking questions and then testing our assumptions. But there is a limitation to science. Science is really about studying the natural world. So what is the natural world? Now, I already said this. The natural world is limited to things that are at least potentially observable, measurable, and testable. And that's important. We may not see things directly, but it should be at least potentially. And of course, if you're looking at that beautiful beach, that's from Costa Rica. I know many of us wishing we were at the beach right now. Wait, I am going to the beach most days. I'm in Florida right now. Yes, and I'm going to the beach. Okay, so things in the natural world, animals, rocks, stars, rock stars, right? Or even the spread of diseases, climate change. All of these things are part of the natural world that we can measure and test for, including this cute little ghost crab that you find on white sandy beaches throughout the world. We can observe it. I can measure it. I can conduct experiments on it. It's real. It actually exists. Now, I say at least potentially, nobody can see a radio wave. You can't see them. They just, radio waves are part of the electromagnetic spectrum, but they don't have enough energy to interact with any protein to cause some shape change like visible light does. Now, just because you can't see a radio wave doesn't mean it's not there. This is, of course, a satellite dish from the Very Large Array, the VLA down in southern uh, central New Mexico. And uh, it takes special equipment, in this case, to see a radio wave. That's why it's at least potentially, right? Because until we discovered them, nobody knew about them. 
but they were there. It just took some advances in technology. We also use MRIs, magnetic resonance, to look inside your body. Kind of cool. We can diagnose a lot of different medical conditions with this thing. So if there's no way to at least potentially observe it, measure it, or test for it, it's probably outside the realm of science. Now, we might need some fancy piece of equipment like a satellite dish or an MRI. It took nearly 100 years since Einstein developed his theory of general relativity to discover gravitational waves. It took some pretty sophisticated uh, equipment to do that, but it was at least potentially. It took a while to develop the technology to do that. Now, uh, the Earth is flat. Well, we can disprove that. That's a hypothesis, actually a valid hypothesis, but it's been disproven. But if you tell me the Earth is on the back of a giant turtle swimming through the cosmos, and there's no way to ever detect this giant turtle, but just because you can't discover it doesn't mean it's not there. Well, you're outside the realm of science. It's, it's a myth. It's okay. I mean, it's a cool myth. I think it's awesome. I, I would like to think that we're on the back of a giant sea turtle. Sea turtles are awesome. But hey, if I can't measure it or test for it or observe it, at least potentially, then that's outside the realm of science. And that is the limitations of science. So importantly, science is limited to studying the natural world. And of course, science is incredibly broad. I mean, you know, when I was in college, I learned about physics and chemistry. And I, the book, my chemistry book was called Chemistry, the Central Science. This said all these different things depend on it. Well, you know what? Biology. You're the apex science, right? Because biology depends on chemistry, physics, geology. I had a geology teacher tell me, one of my friends is a geologist, and he said, Tom, you know what? Uh, biology is an extension of geological processes. And I was like, what? We were sitting in a tractor having a few drinks, and I was like, man, you are absolutely right. And climatology, the study of our climate, guess what? Intricately connected to biology and even astronomy. And as you're going to learn in the next few chapters, guess what? We are connected to the universe as well, and astronomical processes also affect biology, and we wouldn't exist without astronomical processes. I know. Isn't that weird? That's awesome. But these are all the different fields of science. Of course, I, I missed some there, but that's okay. You get the idea. Biology, the apex science here. Now, Current events are, they're tough right now. I mean, there are, our country's in turmoil, and there's just no two ways about it. It doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you're on. If you've watched the news, there, there's some issues going on here. And one important point that I need to make is that science is not political. Now science becomes politicized. Science is a way of thinking. It's a way of understanding the natural world. It uses observations and experiments and and, and uh we interpret those experiments, and then from that, we use critical thinking to form our opinions and make decisions. And uh, so I'm going to throw out this entire series of lectures that I'm going to do. You know, the heart of it is science. We use science to make sense of the world around us. It's based on evidence. It's based on facts and reality. Things like, hey, GMOs are safe. Evolution's a fact. You don't need to eat organic food to be healthy. That's okay. How do we know this? Evidence experimentation that gives us data, that gives us facts about the world. Now, our current world has become heavily politicized, and science has become politicized as well. And it's, some people believe in science, and some people don't. And it's actually not a belief system. It's a function of what is real and what is not. So if I state that the burning of fossil fuels is causing climate change, that's a fact based on evidence. If I say wearing a mask prevents the spread of the coronavirus disease. Guess what? That is also a fact. It's not a political statement of whether I'm conservative or liberal or libertarian. Vaccines are safe. They prevent diseases. Not a political statement based on what your, my ideological beliefs are or knowing that a GMO is safe. That's not a liberal statement or a conservative statement. That's one born out of science. So we can use science outside of just understanding the natural world, we can use the scientific method of testing our assumptions by doing observations and experiments to collect data to inform our opinions 
from a wide range of things, from conspiracy theories to stolen elections to climate change and whether or not we should spend extra money on organ eating organic food. I say don't waste your money. Go eat healthy. Okay, well, that is it. That is an introduction to the limitations of science. And stay tuned for my next episode. And that is, what is the scientific method? How do we science? All right, have a good day.